Hey guys, welcome back for a full kitchen makeover. I've got a start to finish transformation to share with you today, upgrading this kitchen on a budget. We've DIY'd nearly everything, painting cabinets, updating hardware, painting walls, replacing countertops and appliances, all to get to this final stage where we can decorate and then leave my friends Brandy and Jeremy with a beautiful, functional kitchen to love and enjoy. I thought it would be really helpful to start this video by sharing the before shots and progress photos so that you could see how this kitchen really stuck out as a black hole in this open concept floor plan. Now, painting the upper cabinets and replacing the countertops did wonders in brightening up this space, but we really thought we needed to paint the lower cabinets as well, so we're back to get all of that finished today. And we went back and forth for a while about if we should paint them all one color or two-toned, and we ultimately decided to go with a two-toned look and use this beautiful navy blue color for all of the lower cabinets. This is still from that same Beyond Paint brand that we used on the upper cabinets. It worked out really well. We loved the finish and wanted to stick with it since it is an all-in-one paint and requires very little prep work. Now, if you are interested in updating your kitchen but you feel like it's very intimidating or you're brand new to the DIY space, I shared a full in-depth step-by-step step tutorial style video for how to paint your cabinets professionally without sanding. I already shared that video on my channel and I just documented the entire process of updating those upper cabinets and what a difference a little bit of paint can make regardless of your skill level or your budget. So if you are looking for more of a tutorial style to kind of motivate you and empower you to make these kinds of changes and updates in your own home to reflect your own personal style or personality, then definitely make sure that you go back and check that out. I also have an entire how-to tutorial style video for how to replace and install and finish your countertops with a butcher block countertop. And we were so happy with how that turned out. So again, that one is already up as well. And I will do my best to remember to link them down in the description box for you in case you are wanting to check out those big DIY projects and see how you might be able to update and upgrade your living space on a budget. Okay, so I think I figured out a really good technique for cutting in while still using that stippling motion and not needing to tape. So I wanted to show that to you because I can already see the comments coming in about why wasn't I taping off. So I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing. It's saving so much time and prep work. And you guys know I love to focus on technique over painter's tape. So anyway, basically what I'm doing is kind of shimmying the brush like this. I get all of the excess off down here first, dabbing and stippling, and then I just shimmy my brush up towards the top like that. That way I'm still getting that stippling motion that the paint brand itself recommends while not making a mess and having a crisp clear line up there it's getting it as close to the butcher block as possible without painting onto the butcher block so i'm just going through the entire top portion like that all of these seams on the trim and then down below and of course if i do happen to get anything on the countertop, on the floor, on this cord around. I'm just using a wet piece of paper towel and wiping it immediately. This stuff cleans up really easily that way. For all of the cabinet fronts, the doors that will open out, I'll be using the same technique that I showed you when I painted the upper cabinets. And then all of the drawers, you can see Derek took them all out for me and he's actually lining them up over there. So it'll be easy for me to just roll everything at once and not have to worry about like staggering it in here or them accidentally closing or anything like that. A new place, 
a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time. Just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in it, so where I can find myself. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. 'Cause I found my way, I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. 'Cause I found my way. All this time painting, the only drop of paint I've gotten on my clothes is this one right here, and it just happened when I was filming that last clip, painting this drawer and holding the camera at the same time. I'm so mad because these are some of my favorite pants, so hopefully this comes out in the wash. If you know a good trick or a hack for how to get paint out of clothes, please let me know. But here we are, everything is all finished with its first coat. Well, not everything, but everything that we were planning to do today. All of the drawers, all of the cabinet fronts, all of the like large spaces are all having their first coat on. It took me about an hour and 20 minutes to get all of this painted, so I need to wait another hour before I can do the second coat. But you can see it went on really bright and splotchy, but it's already starting to get darker. It's drying a little bit more even. You can tell the difference right here from when it's first rolled on and when it like starts drying and starts getting darker. I was nervous at first. I was like, this is like cobalt blue and it's looking a lot more navy. What happened here is I just went back and painted this trim piece that I didn't do before. So this is fresh paint that I just did compared to what's been painted on for about an hour now. So according to the directions, we need to wait two to four hours between coats. So we have one more hour. Derek and I are going to eat some lunch and by the time we're done with that, we should be ready to go on a second coat. We have two coats of the navy on all of the cabinet fronts and all of these large spaces and it's looking pretty opaque. It definitely dried a lot darker and smoother than when I was first rolling it on. I don't think that we're gonna have to go with a third coat right now, maybe some touch-ups like to finish everything off, but I think we're pretty good to go to just start removing all of the doors off of their hinges so that I can get to the face frames. That's this portion of like kitchen cabinets that's called a face frame. So I didn't paint those yet, obviously, because I couldn't access all of the parts of them with the doors on, but I think we're good to go to to take the hinges off and start painting all of that and I'm hoping that it'll go relatively smoothly. <laughs> it's I think the most time consuming part of it is going to be cutting in, you know, up to all of these edges here, but this will roll pretty quickly. Also, this is coming off so much brighter on camera. Let me see if I can turn the brightness down to show you a more accurate it's still brighter than it is in person, but I feel like that's a little bit more accurate for the color than what you were seeing previously. When I turn the brightness up for lighting, it definitely brightens the colors as well. So I don't want you guys to think that we're like making her kitchen chartreuse. That's definitely, it's definitely more of a navy. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get all of those cabinets removed. We're keeping the drawers out for now and paint the face frames. So typically I do not use painter's tape and any of my long-term viewers, your jaws are probably dropping right now seeing that I taped off these edges. But ultimately I decided it would probably be best for these cabinet boxes 
and really save me some time in the long run just because of the technique that is recommended with that stippling motion for the beyond paint. I wanted to be able to get up to those edges without having to really be too careful and take too much time to do it because there are so many cabinets and this is such a big project that I wanted to be able to kind of just breeze through the painting portion. At this point, I had been painting this kitchen for like three weeks. I was kind of a little bit over it and I just wanted to get it done. So taking those few extra minutes to tape off areas like protecting the brand new countertops to make sure that I didn't damage them after all of the hard work that went into finishing them and also taping off where the kick plate meets the floor to protect the flooring in the quarter round made it a lot easier to just go ahead and roll that paint on without having to worry about bumping into anything that it shouldn't. Now typically I don't really like painters tape for a couple of reasons. I feel like it doesn't actually give you those crisp clean lines that you're looking for and bleed through occurs more often than not. I know there's a bunch of hacks for how to prevent that from happening but none of them are foolproof and all of them require extra material and extra time. So I didn't even attempt any of those hacks but for the most part the bleed through was pretty minimal and anything that did occur I was able to go back and fix later mainly because I was going to be painting the backsplash and the walls anyway so my top priorities in protecting the kitchen were protecting the countertops and the flooring and the tape did a great job at doing that. I tried to get some satisfying paint pulls for you guys or tape pulls for you guys. I'm going to show you those in a few minutes and sadly none of it was as satisfying as I was wanting. It was really stuck on there good but I did get some good ASMR sounds for you, a few good shots and I'm going to share all of that as soon as I finish painting all of these lower cabinet boxes and all of the kick plates and let that dry a little bit so that I don't risk damaging the paint job at all. Time to talk hardware for a second. I have all of the old cabinet knobs and drawer pulls here and the brushed nickel is just not the right color. But other than that, all of these are in really good condition still. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. So it wouldn't make sense to spend hundreds of dollars to replace all of this hardware just to get it in a different color. So I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy hardware update using some spray paint. We have the Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer in one in the pure gold color. This is going to match the brand new faucet, update all of these knobs and drawer pulls for only $6 for this can of paint instead of spending hundreds just to change the color of all of these. Okay, time to paint the walls in the backsplash and we are using the same Swiss coffee color as we did in the dining room and the living room. We really liked it, plus it's an open concept in here, so 
it just makes sense to use the same color for all of the walls. I'm going to get this opened, pour it into our paint tray, and start painting all of the backsplash and all of the walls in here. Just in case you missed it when I first said it, this paint color is called Swiss Coffee by Bear, and we did get it mixed into the Bear Ultra Scuff Defense paint base. This is a beautiful creamy white that can work in both a cool toned and a warmed toned space, and honestly, I think it's the perfect white. And I know that sounds so crazy because previously I had always associated white walls and white spaces as feeling very cold and sterile and hospital-like, but Swiss coffee is the one that changed my mind. I feel like it works no matter what your aesthetic is, and it's perfect in dining rooms, kitchens, living rooms. I even have this color on the walls in my bedrooms, and it never feels cold and uninviting, and I think that's because it has a slightly warm undertone, so it just creates this very cozy, comforting ambiance, but it still has a very high light reflective property, so it still creates a light, bright, airy space and will really open up a small space especially. So if you are looking for the perfect base, the perfect white, I would highly recommend this Swiss Coffee by Bear. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint this on all of the backsplash and then also all of the remaining walls in the kitchen so that it will be a cohesive look with the dining room and the living room which I already worked on last spring those full makeover transformations are already live on my channel if you wanted to go check them out and see the full scope of this space and this house's floor plan but anyway we're gonna roll this onto the walls of the backsplash here and then we also need to switch out the microwave to match the stainless steel appliances and then we can get into the final stages of decorating this kitchen and pulling it all together, which I am just so beyond excited for you guys to see. This has been a labor of love for sure. It took over three weeks to finish this kitchen, but now that it's all done, it turned out beautifully. I can't wait to share it with you, and I can definitely say it was totally worth the work that we put into it.
So we have all of these new pieces here that we're going to be able to play around with, see how we might be able to incorporate them into all the things that Brandy already had, and just create some zones and stations around the kitchen that will allow it to be more functional but also beautiful. Okay, we are all finished with this kitchen makeover, but before I share how it all came together, I wanted to remind you of our starting point and show those before shots one more time, just so that you could really grasp the full transformation here, how much lighter and brighter and beautiful this space is. It is so gorgeous, way more cohesive with the rest of the house while still carrying its own punch of personality and just liveliness in this home. I love the way that it turned out. I love all of the decor, how functional it is, but also how beautiful. And most importantly, Brandy and Jeremy love it. And that's what we did it for. So anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed coming along for this process. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'll catch you all in the next one.